Uh, we'll uh, jump to our uh, uh, second uh, speaker. I would like to uh, uh, introduce you to uh, uh, my friend, Professor uh, uh, Yad uh, Bengal, who is the, the head of the Department of Industrial Engineering and uh, uh, Management at Tel Aviv University. His, uh, research, uh, his research includes statistical uh, methods for control and analysis of complex uh, processes, machine learning, uh, applications to industrial and services systems, and big data analytics. He wrote and edited five books, has published more than 80 uh, scientific papers and uh, patents, received numerous uh, best papers awards, and uh, uh, supervised dozens of uh, graduate students. Uh, he received grants and uh, awards from uh, General Motors, IEEE, uh, Israel uh, uh, Ministry of Science, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, I am proud to invite Professor Bengal, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, I must say that uh, I have some things to show uh, that are related to the talk of VS, and we, we never talked about it. Uh, and it will be interesting to compare because uh, we did a similar study in a way. I'll show it in a moment. Uh, what I'll try to present are some uh, research uh, works that are related to each other. and. Uh, are all connected with uh, the predictive analytic research group in, uh, in our department. And uh, as uh, Yaniv mentioned, we work uh, consistently with uh, real data from companies. And uh, this is a, a good occasion to uh, uh, say that we are opening uh, a new master program that is specializing in different uh, type of uh, uh, analytics and uh, uh, as well as uh, operational and human factor behavior, and uh, we'd we'll be happy to, uh, uh, to recruit students to that program. Uh, I want to start with a, with a study that is supported by uh, uh, the, the security center, the cyber center uh, in Tel Aviv, that is unique in the sense that it involves uh, four researchers. Uh, um, uh, I'm one of them, and, and Tal Raviv, please raise your hand, is the second one. And the two other guys, Joachim and Iran, are abroad. But the idea was to, uh, uh, to find a user-oriented security system uh, and that consists of, of four different blocks. One of them is a machine learning block that gets information uh, from uh, the outside, some external factors, and can rank websites and user. Then this information uh, flows into a, uh, a group um, of uh, Tal and Joachim that deals with uh, aspect of optimization. As you are aware, uh, when you want to prevent malware and when you want to create a, a, a system uh, that will be safer, it's an optimization problem after all because you can block more and more functionalities in the organization, but you arm yourself and uh, if you open uh, these functionalities, you are more vulnerable to uh, attacks. So all these type of uh, optimization are dealt with uh, uh, this uh, team uh, led by Tal. Uh, but then uh, eventually when you come to the conclusion what is the right level of uh, uh, security uh, for each user, you have to remember that uh, you are dealing with a, a man in the other side. It's a human machine interface. And you can send a, a warning message, but the question is what the user will do with it. Uh, and therefore, uh, Joachim is a psychologist that worked for many years uh, um, uh, in uh, engineering projects. And all the system of uh, optimizing not only the system, but understanding how the user will react to it is uh, his part. And then in order to wrap it up and to create a system, a dynamic system, with the right architecture, uh, uh, you need uh, an IT and architecture guy, Ran Toch in this case, uh, that can actually uh, 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 lead to a prototype of, of such a system. And here uh, uh, we also work, Ran is also working with Checkpoint. And, uh, uh, and all this uh, uh, collaboration is, is very unique in the sense that it's uh, multidisciplinary and involves all these aspects. And I want to show you some parts of uh, uh, 
of uh, my research that are related to this project. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll start with the external factor. And the first one, again, um, I never saw a VS slides. The first one was just to rank uh, sites by, uh, uh, by their country, region, and time. And we used a huge data set uh, based on an American toolbar. And we got, I must say, quite similar results. Uh, let me see if I can increase. It, it's quite hard to see, but uh, OK. So Uzbekistan is the first one by far. But the second one is Sri Lanka. OK? And uh, what we thought, you know, you, you got India to be the first. We thought that, you know, Sri Lanka is the backyard of uh, India. It's like the, the laboratory. You can, you can uh, release uh, the beast there in the wild and see what's going on. Uh, uh, but then you have Korea and India and so on and so forth, and uh, eventually uh, um, Israel and, and the United States are uh, far to the right there. So uh, it's, uh, it's um, uh, quite uh, uh, relevant to know first as a very uh, um, easy factor that, uh, that you are aware of, who is trying to uh, uh, connect with you or where is the website that you are trying to connect what are the time of action and this is one of the uh, inputs that you can uh, easily uh, collect into your system now uh, another external input that tend to be quite surprising was to take uh, designs and colors formatting features from uh, from websites and I don't know if you can see these are four websites for uh, pregnancy, pregnancy from different countries, USA, Israel, Sweden, Russia. And it, it's, you know, it's small, but, but maybe you can see that there is some kind of similarities. It's not only the colors. It's the way that it is presented uh, and, and the meshing of the colors. And uh, um, Doron Cohen uh, did his master by designing an algorithm that can actually uh, take a website, shove all the uh, uh, design feature and colors, and actually building um, uh, what we call a random forest that can try to uh, classify those websites just by their, uh, just by their uh, design features. And surprisingly enough, uh, we found that it's very helpful. This is a graph that shows you uh, the classification results of different type of uh, websites. Crack, of course, is the one that uh, is of interest to us, but there are shopping, games, news, and search. And you see what is a lift by uh, design and meta and, and, uh, and the combination of these two together. So you get more information from uh, meta words from text but if you add uh, the design you actually can jump something like 12 to 15 percent of more accuracy just by having the design feature of that website now there are many explanations by the way the, the, this is not the true with the uh, search engines it's it's different thing uh, with search engine part of the problem is that search engine involve a lot of uh, meta text so uh, this actually ruins the, uh, the classification monotonicity. But in all the other cases, you see that the design factor really add a lot of information for the classification. And um, there are many reasons. I mean, uh, also hackers tend to adopt each other patterns. And uh, if you look at, uh, at uh, uh, all these uh, uh, websites uh, that are risky, in many times, uh, you can actually find very good uh, uh, similarities uh, among them. So this is just two examples of external uh, uh, inputs that can be uh, taken. Then there is this part of interaction between user profiles and website profiles. So this is a joint work uh, with Michal and Nancy. I'm not, I'm not sure if they are here, but uh, ah, yeah, Michal is here and Nancy is not. Uh, and the idea is that uh, you can create a situation uh, where you can do a close feedback between 
the user risk score and the website risk score in a way that, you know, if a website has a lot of uh, uh, traffic from risky users, you increase the score of that website. And in a similar way, if a user is entering a, a risky website, you can increase uh, his own uh, uh, risk uh, uh, score. So this is like a, a closed loop, like a Markovian type of uh, a way where you, action, you can actually uh, lead to a situation where you can uh, uh, try to uh, get a, a, a flexibility model that eventually will lead you to a, uh, a, the correct risk factors of website and users. Um, and, and again, we are not talking about necessarily hackers, you know. Uh, um, uh, Nancy is not here. She says that her mother, she's the most risky uh, user that she knows because she goes everywhere and whenever she got uh, a message, she will click the yes button. So you also want to, to give a high risk factor to, to people that are not aware, and this I think the reason that uh, she put this nice child here, uh, that are not aware of, of the risk uh, patterns that exist there. Then when you have those external inputs and, uh, and uh, a user profile, you can actually move to behavior modeling. So uh, some of this research is done by Joachim. He will present it in a different occasion. I want to show you an example of uh, uh, the way that you can actually capture the behavior of users and use it in order to better, uh, 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 to give a better uh, risky score. Uh, so this is a, um, a study uh, with uh, Eran Toch and Boaz Lerner when we got uh, data from a cellular company of how people are moving in, in cities, okay? So we have both Be'er Sheva, we knew that you'll come, Yuval, and uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, and you see how people are moving, and again, these are uh, sort of basin network uh, type of modeling where you can, you don't only look where a person is at a certain time, but you look, uh, uh, you try to find patterns. If you were in the gym in the morning, what will be your next step in noon, and uh, then what will be the next step afterwards, and sometimes you need a long memory, sometimes you need a short memory uh, in terms of those models. Uh, for example, if you are at home, you don't need to know what you, you were, where you were before, but if you are at work, it helps to know what you did before. And of course, you can then relate those behavior to the uh, risk uh, 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 factors because uh, if you observe a very strange behavior, abnormal behavior of that user, you know that maybe uh, his device is used by another entity. So uh, what we were able to do in this uh, study is of course to identify places where people are moving, but actually create a sort of um, an outlook diary. You see what you see, of course, all the users are anonymous. We don't know who are they. But what you see is a diary of uh, two persons in Tel Aviv. We have millions of such diaries, OK? And you know what are the real patterns. Uh, uh, you see they're, they are sleeping, and then they are going to a place which probably uh, is uh, their work. Then they commute. They go uh, in Friday evening to places that probably are related to uh, uh, you know, to bars or to, uh, uh, peop to social uh, event uh, type of uh, events. And actually you can then use this type of information to know if uh, the user uh, is the same user that you, are, uh, that you believe he is. So this is all about behavior. Uh, then come the optimization part. And uh, again, I, I won't go into Tal work. Tal will, will uh, uh, talk about it uh, maybe in another occasion. But uh, when you do the optimization out of all these variables, and, and this is a joint work with uh, uh, IAI, what you're able to find are those factors that are relevant in order to uh, be able to uh, score the, the website. And you can sort those variables according to their uh, contribution to this uh, score. You can find patterns, again, some of these patterns are hard to uh, follow, but uh, there are significant patterns that when they 
occur, you know whether or not they, they, are, they can represent a, a risky or behavior or a sort of an attack. Uh, you can, of course, uh, see those patterns uh, visually, and, and you see, again, some examples of, uh, of uh, uh, HTTP uh, inputs and the uh, IEPs that uh, change their behavior at a certain time, and uh, you can track these. And eventually, you can use all these to try uh, and uh, uh, score uh, those attacks uh, or those behavior to see if they are indeed risky. Uh, and this involves, of course, both the supervised data that you, you, you had before, as well as unsupervised data and the external factor that I spoke about before. And eventually, we could reach, uh, this is a real data set again, uh, that we could reach a level of a false positive rate of 0 0.1 and a recall of 92 in identifying uh, different types of attacks. Some of, their, some of them are uh, zero-day attack. So uh, I think that uh, um, this sort of uh, research that is quite wide, it goes to different direction, is exactly the type of uh, research that, uh, uh, that we could uh, look for when we try to protect system. We need to learn websites. We need to, need to learn all the external type of factors. We need to, to learn the behavioral patterns of specific user and specific website and combine them all together into uh, a system that can then optimize them and decide what is the best way uh, to act uh, taking into account that eventually those recommendations uh, will, uh, will be presented to a, a user that also has to be learned and also to, has to be uh, analyzed and combined into this uh, uh, overall system. So these are the types of uh, research that can be done uh, uh, in a university that involves a lot of people from different fields that can uh, contribute to uh, uh, this specific uh, cyber question. Okay, thank you.